The Digma Race is a 60% keyboard, which means it's missing some keys, like the number pad, the F keys, or the dedicated arrow keys. That's why it comes with a pre-installed layer that you can switch to in order to access those keys comfortably. But as soon as you start using it, you'd want to customize that layer, add new ones, create combos and macros, and much more. That's where our configurator software, Basecore, comes in. Hi, I'm Dominique, and today we're going to go over the very basics of how you use Basecore to customize your keyboard. First of all, let's download Basecore. Don't look at me like that. I told you, I was going to start with the very basics. Just go to digma.com, head over the software page, and choose your OS. Once it's downloaded, install it and open it. When you open Basecore, it will automatically detect your keyboard. Press Connect, and you'll get to the Layout and Color Map Editor. This is where all the magic happens. Let's start with the most straightforward thing. Change the color of a key. For example, I like my arrow keys to be highlighted in my navigation layer, so let's change that. Select a key and then the color you want, for example, orange. If you don't like any available colors, I feel you. They are a bit basic, but luckily you can make your own. The rainbow is the limit. Also, you can assign the same color to every key. Just press backlight and boom. Let's revert that to a more neutral white. I don't want my eyes to bleed. In the same way, you can also change the color of each segment of the underglow and even the neuron. For my main layer, I'm going to choose pink, which will contrast nicely with the white keys and the accent colors I'm going to pick for the thumb keys and the modifier row. I like to assign different underglow and neuron colors for each layer. That way I can know which layer I'm at just by glancing at the color of the neuron. Let's continue with something simple. Changing a key in your base layer. For example, I usually only press space with my right thumb. So I'm going to assign backspace to T2. That way I won't have to reach for it with my pinky every time I mistype. Yes. I'm not perfect. I mistype. Select the key you want to change and assign the new value. In this case, backspace. Ta-da! Now I can quickly delete with my left thumb. Maybe, oi, and that's what I did over there. Having backspace and enter on the left side of the keyboard also comes in handy when you have one hand on the keyboard and the other hand on the mouse. But let's say you want something different on that key. For example, shift which is not shown in the quick menu. In that case, click on the key config and look for the desired key. You can also use the search bar to find it. Now let's try something a bit more complicated. For example, I use Shift Command Alt S a lot. It's save for the web in Photoshop, which requires the worst finger stretching, but I rarely use caps lock, so I'm going to put it there. Select caps lock, assign the letter S, and then add the desired modifiers. Remember to hit send changes to the rays to apply the changes. It seems obvious, but I've lost count of the times I've had to redo some changes because I simply forgot to apply them. If you want to make changes to any other layer, for example, layer one, you can choose it in the layers drop down menu over here. By the way, you can also rename your layers. Just click on the name and write down the new one. At this point, you might be asking yourself, how can I access a layer while using the keyboard? There are three ways to do that. We have shift to layer, move to layer, and one-shot layers. If you assign a key to shift to layer one, you will move to that layer just while holding that key. When you release it, you'll go back to the previous layer. Think of it as a regular shift, but instead of everything being capitalized, you have your layer. I use shift to layer for layers where I only make just a few key presses, like for example, to access the media keys. To configure it, select the key, press key config, 
and select the layer you want to shift to in the shift to layer section. If you assign move to layer one to a key, you will move to that layer just when you tap it without having to hold that key. This is useful if you have a layer that you're going to use for a long time. For example, I have a layer to play League of Legends. So I have set a key to move to that layer, that one. Configuring a move to layer key works the same way. Select the key, press key config, and select the layer you want in the move to layer section. But remember, you'll have to configure a key on the new layer to move back to the previous layer. You don't want to be trapped in another dimension. One shot layers are kind of a combination of both. When you hold the key, you shift to that layer. When you tap it, you move to the layer, but then go back to the previous layer after one key press. When you double tap it, you move to the layer. To go back to the original layer, you tap the key again. For example, I have a layer with my number pad on one side and navigation on the other. Sometimes I only need to input one number, so I either tap or hold the key. But if I'm going to input data on a spreadsheet, I will double tap it to move to the layer and insert the numbers comfortably. And then I'll single tap when I'm finished. To configure a one-shot layer, select the key, press key config, and assign the layer you want to move to in the one-shot layer section. Dual function keys can perform two actions, one when held and a different one when tapped. They're perfect for the thumb keys. For example, I've configured this thumb key, T6, to be enter on tap and shift to layer one when held. To configure a dual function key with a layer, select a key and the layer shift when held toggle and select the layer you want to shift to. To configure a dual function key with a modifier, select the key, assign the desired modifier, and press the modifier when held toggle. Another interesting functionality is the possibility to bind your mouse actions to your keys. You can even configure mouse movements, mouse clicks, or even the mouse wheel. This lets you keep your hands on the keyboard and avoid unnecessary movements to reach the mouse. I mainly use the scroll function to browse the web or a document without using the mouse. So select the desired key and press key config and go over to the mouse configuration options. Macros are sequences of events such as keystrokes, mouse clicks, and delays that can be played back to help with repetitive strings of texts or tasks. For example, I use forward slash jiffy to add gifs to Slack easily. They don't call me the gif queen for nothing. So I have a macro for that. To configure a macro, tap the key where you want to assign it, press key config and go to add macro. Then select the key press edit macro and you'll be in the macro configurator menu. Here you can add your desired sequence of keystrokes including customized delays. Remember, don't forget to save once you're finished. There's also a preferences section where you can adjust different parameters of your keyboard. For example, you can configure the brightness of your LEDs, how fast dual function keys react to a hold, or the speed and acceleration of the mouse keys. This will help you tailor the keyboard to your personal preferences. Finally, don't forget to keep your firmware up to date to enjoy the latest features. Just head over to Firmware Update, press Next, and follow the instructions. I hope this video has helped you grasp the multiple options that Basecore offers to help you make the most out of your Digma race. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. We'll be glad to help you out. You can also join our subreddit and Discord channel where we have a thriving community of keyboard enthusiasts. The links are in the description below. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that bell icon to be notified when we publish the next video. Until then, bye!